Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining another episode of the PM Learning Series. Uh, my name is Shavi, uh, host of the show and product lead at LinkedIn. Uh, please introduce uh, where you're joining us from. Uh, really excited for another episode to uh, chat with uh, amazing guests and with all of you. So the Product Management Learning Series is a series of live streaming events where industry thought leaders and product practitioners uh, share their PM career journeys as well as lessons learned along the way to inspire current and uh, aspiring PM like you to level up your product career. Um, so please make sure you subscribe to our newsletter, which you can find the link in the events details tab uh, that shares uh, recaps of key takeaways from today's event, as well as future event updates. Um, we are also recently launching a brand new special series focused on building generative AI products. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe so that you can receive uh, regular weekly updates uh, around trends and you know thoughts uh, from leaders building generative AI products. Uh, with that, today I actually have a very, very special guest. Let me bring him up to the stream. Hi, Felix. Welcome to the show. Hey, Javi. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so for folks, please drop in the chat where you're joining us from. Um, I do see potentially some skip spin <laughs> uh, comments in the show, so make sure you don't click on those. Um, LinkedIn is working really hard to get rid of some of those messages, but uh, make sure you you don't uh, get tricked into clicking in. But um, yeah, so folks, uh, uh, please introduce yourself, what questions you want to ask us. But um, Felix, thank you so much for joining us. I know that it's very late in Singapore on a Friday night. Uh, so excited to have you here. Uh, you are the co-founder and CEO at uh, ADP List. You launched it during COVID pandemic in 2021 uh, for a very noble mission, right? To help people who had lost their jobs, find mentorship, find jobs, find their community. Uh, the startup has grown uh, into one of the world's largest mentorship platform uh, with over 16,000 mentors from companies like Netflix, Airbnb, Google, and more, uh, hosting over 60 million minutes uh, of mentoring sessions on subjects such as data science, uh, product design, and software development. I believe earlier this year, back in May, the ADP List Product Day, I was honored to be part of it and maybe contributing to the 16 million minutes or maybe even more now because this was listed a couple months ago. I'm sure the platform has grown since. Yeah. Um, but it's really, really amazing to have you here. You were um, you are featured as Forbes 30 under 30 in the Asians list and then also one of the future uh, you know, leaders. So really excited to have you here. And yes, folks, please continue to introduce yourself. We have a lot of folks from the US today, um, from joining from Dallas, Jersey, New Hampshire, Florida, Chicago, Atlanta. Uh, yeah, things, uh, and then uh, folks from India. Um, so yeah, continue to introduce yourself, drop in the chat uh, where you're joining us from. So Felix, let's get started. Why don't you share a little bit about so I kind of share kind of the resume version of your story, but why don't you share us a little bit about your inspiration from a more like a personal journey standpoint? Like what what inspired you to start ADP List? And maybe we can bring it life if you show us about the product experience. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, Shavi, it's it's exciting and very, very, you know, honored to be speaking to a lot of people here from the US as well. You know, I spent I spent some time in the Bay Area last year, and you know, just really love that place. And so I want to be back there again um, next year um, and spend even more time. So I'll I'll love to start off, you know, and I always love to start off um, my story with with growing up because I think that's that's kind of like you know where my hero's journey began. Um, you know, I I was born to in Singapore, born and raised here, and you know, I was born to. Uh, my, my parents, both of them, were, were very hard workers. Uh, my, my dad worked in a bakery. My mom, um, you know, she was a preschool teacher and then she left her job. She's now helping my dad. You know, it's 12 a.m. here in Singapore and she's not yet home. She's, she's still working in the shop. And so we, I, I grew up really kind of, you know, admiring just the, the people around me and just in an environment where, you know, I didn't sit at home and, and, and watch TV as a kid. Um, but I really 
you know, went down to, to, to the bakery and just support my, my parents and, and my grandparents at the time. And so it really put things into perspective as a, as a child. I think, you know, you have to sort of work for what you want. You have to, you know, put in the work. You have to be on the ground. So I developed this, this mentality, uh, you know, since I was young. And so my life journey has always been grounded in, in, in the hearts of hard work. You know, I always believe that, you know, I should be the hardest working person in the room. You know, if, if it's 12 a.m. today, you know, and, and someone is still in the room, I probably got to be staying until 1 a.m. You know, I always want to be that person. Um, and I always advocate for hard work. I, I think it's, you know, I, I mean, you know, those who watch basketball, Kobe Bryant is one of those people um, with the Mamba mentality. And I think, you know, in today's generation, obviously, much different. Um, I guess people talk about mental health and, and, and having the adequate amount of rest. Um, and I'm a big supporter of that. But I, I just grew up in, in, in a place where I, I think, you know, you have to be willing to, if you want to be successful, you have to be willing to take the hits in life as well. You know, it's, it's you, you can't just have the success. You always have to have both, right? And so I, I just grew up with that mentality. And, and I think, you know, growing up in a very humble household like that, uh, it puts perspective that you don't get access to a lot of things that maybe, you know, folks that were born in more privileged families, um, you know, were getting. And one of those things was, you know, the valuable network. One of those things was the mentorship, right? Um, I, you know, I, I could profoundly remember like one of my friends got an internship um, in an amazing tech company, um, you know, when he was like 16 or 17 years old because his, his dad worked in a tech company um, and none of us got that access, right? I didn't get that access. And so, you know, having the exposure at that young age was so important, but it was only available to people with that were born in the right families. I mean, it's not anyone's fault that, that they were born in a family that 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 doesn't match their, their aspirations, right? Um, and so what I what I fundamentally you know believe in my entire life is that I think everyone doesn't matter where you're born, doesn't matter you know how you were raised, um, as long as you have a dream and as long as you're willing to work hard. You know, the world should, in a sense, provide you an opportunity to start at the same level as anyone else, right? I, I think that is the core belief of ADP list, is that, you know, if you have internet access and you're willing to dream, you're willing to work hard, you know, there are people out there willing to help you and support you um, that is outside of your network and your status quo. And so ADP list began with, with that dream. Right. Uh, when I started about two years, two and a half years ago, um, and, and the mission is to really democratize mentorship. And so we look at a lot of platforms today. A lot of mentorship platforms around the world are paid. Right. They are, they are paid. you got to pay for an hour session. you got to pay for maybe two hour session. I think that's amazing. I think people deserve to get paid. Now, what I think is, 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 is problematic with a lot of models out there is that there hasn't been enough sort of you know, questions being asked and challenged in a way that says, what if I'm unable to pay? You know, what if I'm a student and I have not started working? How am I supposed to pay you a thousand dollars, you know, um, you know, for, for, for two hours of session? You know, how am I supposed to pay for that? Or if I'm working in, in maybe like India, where the wages are not as high as New York or San Francisco, how am I supposed to pay one hour? Because whatever that you're earning in San Francisco, I'm not able to pay that. And so we developed a platform that allows people, and, and, and I'd love to share my screen, um, to, to you know, um, just help them find those people who are willing to support them in their career. Whether you are entry level or whether you're a senior or leadership level, there's always a place for you, right? And so you could obviously, you know, see these folks who are amazing. Yeah, right? before, before I get there, Felix, I just yeah. want to, before I share my screen, I want to say this is very inspiring. Like the community resonated with that as well. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your journey. I know growing up in an Asian family, I definitely hear the hardworking aspect and then sort of the access to like mentorships that you don't otherwise have, right? Like I actually grew up in a pretty, like a 30 year city when I grew up was considered not like the most prestigious cities in, in China. Um, so it's, it's you, you just don't know what's available out there. So I think leveling the playing field, get open people's eyes at, at getting access to those, especially yeah. for free or at a reasonable cost is, is very, very inspiring. I also just wanted to say hi to a couple of international folks as I was calling for that. Uh, we have folks joining us from Niagara, from, um, um, there are some OTAN folks, uh, like um, Ara from, uh, from, from Africa, Rwanda, from Italy, 
Uh, we have folks from Jerusalem, uh, UAE, um, and a couple other, other countries. Thank you so much, folks, for, for joining us, um, in addition to, obviously, the, the U.S. crowd and Leo from Argentina. Now, without further ado, yes, let's bring up the stream, and maybe you can share us a little bit about, yeah, what, uh, what people, folks can do on ADP list. Yeah, sure. I'm just going to maybe like take less than a minute. Um, so basically, this is, you know, what you see on ADP is you can find multiple mentors um, from, you know, so many different levels. And if you're a leader, you're, you're a junior level, you're a mid level looking for to learn from someone, you know, just come to ADP list, click on their profile. Um, you know, you, you could always find some time with them, you know, and or you could just, you know, click into one of these profiles as well. So there's so many different types of mentors, right? that has time available. So, uh, you know, Niyata, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing her, her name right, uh, Niyati, sorry. Um, so you could always find a time, you know, let's say on 9 October, you know, maybe 2 a.m. because I'm based in Singapore, right? So you could always find a time with them and, you know, just get a time to speak to them um, about, you know, your sort of like what you're looking for in your career or, you know, maybe just exchange some notes as design lead to design lead as well. So it's, it's, and it's completely free, right? Because these mentors are all contributing for free. So it's one of those things that, you know, the demo is, op is over, by the way. Um, so it's one of those things that, that really helps to open up our perspective, right? That there are so many people, thousands and tens of thousands of people out there who are willing to just put like 30 minutes on a Friday morning to just have a chat with us. And I think mentorship over the past maybe few years um, for, for as long as I, I, I know that it, it exists, I think has always had this notion that mentorship are only for people looking to switch their career or looking to maybe break into tech or something like that or just for junior people. But no, I mean, you know, we all have mentors. Like you're a manager, you're a lead, you're a director, you all have mentors. I think the question, the honest question is, are we willing to admit that we're not yet the best and are we willing to learn from someone who we respect and admire or and are we willing to be open to different perspectives and voices because i think you know when we put a put a pedestal on, on mentorship and we say that okay look they're only for junior people i think what we're saying is that we stop growing and we stop trying to learn from others when we have a job or when we become leaders but that is not the case you know, the case is that we probably learn from different people now, but we're still learning. And so I think that is the perception that we are really trying to, you know, rebrand and, and change as well at ADP list um, with hopes that I think people are able to find uh, mentors at all levels, all skill sets. Um, you know, and that's really our hope and, and our dream to create more of those conversations that help you to create new perspective. Right. Um, imagine today I'm able to create with, you know, um, a conversation with the, the, the founder of Airbnb, right, Brian Chesky, right? Like there's so much things to, to learn from him. So I think there's always a lot of learning and we just have to be open, um, you know, uh, to be able to learn. And hopefully AD please becomes that window where we're able to see one another transparently. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, I think it also, again, resonated with our community for creating SS, democratizing this SS uh, of mentorship. And all, not just at the entry level, right? But also, as you have alluded to, like across all levels and also to expand kind of your perspectives uh, for people who have been there and done that and then be able to share that knowledge. Now, there's so much that actually I can unpack on what you just said. So let's let's dive, dive in. And folks who are joining us, if you have any question for the likes, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, so we know that earlier, um, Looking at your background, you were uh, previously actually you're a serial entrepreneur. Uh, you co-founded PackDads acquired in 2018, and then led product design um, at Got Trade and Passball. So you had a background in design. Um, how does that help you? You know, embrace sort of a, a more purposeful design, design with intention, in this entrepreneurial journey as you started building ADP Loops and building this community. Um, especially, I think in many ways, startups are very resource crunched, right? So a lot of times people have to trade off kind of like the near term focus versus doing the right thing, doing, you know, things with intention. So tell us a little bit more about that. If you have any specific examples, you could share that with Gray as well. Yeah, of course. That is a great question, um, 
JV, you know, we, I actually didn't put something on LinkedIn, which is I spent two years in the military service here in Singapore. And I think that shaped a big part of my life as well, which we will, we will, we'll talk about that. Um, you know, but being a designer and being a founder, I think there's a lot of similarities when it comes to problem solving, right? When it comes to designing great experiences and caring about people who actually use that experience. One of the biggest things that I take away as a designer into the founder's journey um, in many ways is, you know, I'm not going to typically say like, you know, I'm not going to say the typical things like empathy or anything like that, but I think you tend to have an, a very honest opinion and view of the world. And when I mean honest, I mean extremely objective, right? And so one of the things as a designer that we always sort of, I think a lot of designers fall into this trap is to think that the world revolves around them and the things that they design. It's, and it's easy. It, I mean, it's, it is a legitimate temptation to think that if you work at, you know, a certain startup or if you work at like, you know, WhatsApp, you know, or, or, any, or any of these companies, like it's legitimate temptation and a, and, and a real thing to think that the world revolves around you because you're working on that problem 24-7. You know, you come back from the weekend, you work on that problem again and again and again. So it's easy for you to think that the world revolves around that, but it's not. I think the best designers would understand that the, that the product that you design, the service, the product that they design is only a fraction of someone's day, someone's life. And when you objectively recognize that, you start to really think, what is the quality that I'm trying to bring out, you know, at that instance? You know, what is that? that experience that I'm trying to deliver in that short amount of time. And the more important question is, it, it might just be a fraction of someone's life today or it's this week or this month, but can I make that fraction of time important? I think a lot of designers start asking, how can I make that time bigger, right? How can I make more people spend more time on the app? Which I think it's, it's a great question to ask because we have to ask that question. But I think that is a secondary question. The, the first question we should, be, we should be asking is, can we make that time that they're already spending important, right? And then we talk about, you know, can we extend that time? Can we make it bigger? So I think this is something that I, that I, that I bring, this is the perception that as a designer, I bring um, into as a founder, right? Uh, to be able to bring that, I think that, that pragmatic, you know, reality um, and to be able to design an experience around that. So I, I think that's, that's, that's the one thing that, you know, that, that I always, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, reflect on. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I think the next set of question, actually, one of our community members, Sarab, was asking, that's also where I was leaning into, but I can unpack some of that. Um, I think one of the, let's talk about some of the challenges that you face, right? Um, the, one of them, I think it's about monetizing the product or how you think about democratizing assets, but at the same time, balancing the cost that needs to run the business. Let's start from there. And then I have a couple more follow-up questions that I, I, I wanted to ask. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, this is a very popular question. I, I get asked this um, in almost every single call I go to. It's, a, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of an interesting question because I, I always wonder why would people be curious about a product where they can just use and have fun um, and, and benefit from it and, and why question that? Um, and so I think, you know, I, I've always been, been, been very open to share. So the way that we look at AEP list is less of an education platform, but more of a social network because ultimately we're, we're bringing groups of people together through an interaction. And this interaction is called mentorship, right? On LinkedIn, that interaction might be a newsfeed. Um, you know, on, on, on Instagram, that interaction might be stories or Snapchat, right? But on AD Please, that interaction is mentorship. And so I think a lot of investors, a lot of public view look at us as an education company. But I don't think that, you know, labeling it as, as, as an education company does justice um, you know, to and its overall goal. Because our, our overall goal is to create more valuable conversations that help you to grow. And I think there's a lot of ways to do it. So that is really what we're trying to do. Now, talking about business, right? How, how we monetize. So we, we continue to want to keep the platform open and free for a lot of people. 
but obviously, I think one consideration is it's not sustainable. Right? Anyone knows that. I think anyone asking this question knows that. So first of all, we have obviously fundraised a very, very small round about two years ago. You know, any any aggressive founders would have would have probably ran that money out by right now. Um, but we're conservative, we're frugal, we continue to be frugal and conservative with our cash. So we don't want to spend a lot of money. We always go for the cheapest option, making sure that obviously quality exists. Um, so first of all, we are very conservative with our reserves and, and, and our cash. Now, the way that we really think about monetization is that how can we keep the open access and free while sustaining the platform? The first thing is that, first of all, we want to explore ways to allow the top performing mentors. So this is not majority of the platform, the top performing mentors to start monetizing their sessions. Because first of all, they have proved their quality. They have proved that the, the community wants to meet them again and again and again. And fundamentally, I believe that if you have the talent, if you have been recognized, you deserve to be paid. You deserve to be compensated and rewarded. And I believe that everyone in this room could agree to that. And so we want to give them that optionality. We don't want to force them to it. I think we want to explore that optionality that says, hey, you know, you're a top performer. You know, why not try monetizing some of it, right? So that is a route that, that we really want to explore. Um, we have not done anything on that as of today. Um, the, the second thing that we're already doing is a B2B model, right? So we partner up with companies like Webflow, um, Figma, Notion, uh, you know, so on and so forth, right? Like Amplitude, Mixpanel. So they, they gave us, they, they, they give us sort of like an annual sponsorship fee. And, you know, we, we would create causes and contents for them. Um, and we would make sure that, hey, look, these are amazing contents that the community can engage with while also knowing about the, you know, these brands that sponsor um, these causes, these events like Product Day, Be More and so on. So we, we really try to explore ways that, you know, really helped us to keep this mission alive. Now, if you ask me today, it's, you know, 2023 right now in September, would this work out? I don't know. Maybe I will look back at this video two years later and I'm like, that's a naive thought. So I think I always take a very pragmatic view to business and in, and in, and in life. I think it's to be learned. We have an experimental approach to things, not get too attached that this is going to be my forever business model. So whatever that I'm sharing today is whatever that we're exploring, whatever that we're curious about, but things could change, right? Um, but I think the mission remains and, and it continues to, to want to fight for that, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the um, sort of ever evolving approach because you never know what's for sure. Maybe one of the questions later we would ask is around how does generative AI might impact any of your view on future mentorship, but we'll get to that. One question I do wanted to ask, not so much from the monetization aspect, but more from the human, is you alluded to like purposeful design. So we all know that, you know, as a mentee, people have needs to assess for high quality mentorship. Um, but let's switch gears from a mentor perspective. Um, I think a lot of times mentors have very limited time, right? Um, they might or might not be able to commit to like a, a certain frequency or cadence of mentorship and always be showing up and doing it for free. Um, how do you, do you face that challenge? How do you motivate like the, the commitment of mentors, how they show up, how they engage uh, with with the mentees, and how do you design that experience? Is it do you prefer always one on one, one to many, like a conference setup? Like, what are some of the let's say design thinking that went into um, to solving the in incentives for mentors to to continue to show up and commit to helping others? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, you know, we it's a it's a really interesting question because we have explored multiple formats and and i think it's it's good that you asked about the group format because i think there's something really interesting to share there so we we tried the group format session where a mentor could set up with a group of people and just have a casual mentorship session now we what we found out was that because the mentor is meeting a, a group of strangers for the very first time there is an innate pressure to one to live up to certain expectation, right? You, you feel like you're you're gonna host a workshop. You know, you feel like you single-handedly, you're hosting this, you have to be prepared for it, you have to host a workshop for it. So a lot of mentors, surprisingly, they don't want they don't want to do that unless they are paid, right? Because they, they are they're going in prepared. So that's a path that we explored. Now, the way that we explore one-on-ones is 
you know, we, we obviously have broken a status quo in this industry of mentorship, which is mentorship has to work like Uber. I pay you a fee and you mentor me for an hour. It's a fair, it's a fair trade. So you look at a lot of our competitors, they do that. And I think that, that was before we came out. And when we came out, we said, no, you know, screw that. We're not really going to, you know, look at that and, and say that that, that is going to work. Because as I talk about, you know, the very fundamental principles is that someone to living in a totally different economic circumstances from you would never be able to afford your one hour. And that's not the world that I want to live in, or nor that's the world that our kids should be growing up, right? Like, you know, I, I should be able to go to somewhere without having to worry about the price tag because I'm chasing my dream. And so, so when, when we look at that, the most important thing, um, you know, when it comes to mentors, you know, we have designed an experience that allows them to flexibly, you know, flex their time around 30 minutes schedule per week or even 15 minutes, right? And if they feel like this is not the week that they want, the system automatically caters for that, right? We block out their dates, they are flexibly to block out their dates, there's no minimum co uh, commitment as well. So we really allow them to opt in and out of the system as fast as possible. I think providing that flexibility is an attractive point, you know, because I think a lot of founders, they think about scale and then they, they forget that, hey, look, these people are human as well. They have limited time as much as you do. So I think a lot of people went with a very aggressive approach that, hey, you got to commit and stuff like that in the name of retention. But I think real retention comes when you care about people and you know that if I design a good enough system and a good enough experience, they will come back. And we're seeing retention of sorts, right? Like we have mentors who have not been free for the past six months, but then they come back and they're like, hey, for the next half of this year, I'm much more available. And this system allows me to opt back in. So when you create such a thing, uh, such a design, such a system and experience, I think people, you know, tend to, you know, react to it and they want to be a part of it because it's a system that they can trust. That's important. The word trust is a system that they can trust. And it's a system that easily fits into the lifestyle. So remember, I think one of the most important thing we talk about is that you have to design around their life, not try to create, you know, the 25th hour because that's not possible. So understand the fundamentals and then try to create around that. So that's really how we approach our problems is, you know, by giving a more flexible approach and whatnot. The last but not least is much more intangible is that, sure, you could leave the product um, for really all we know, but hopefully you don't leave the community. And I think when you look at ADP lists, a lot of people don't say it's a website, it's a platform. I think there are some people that say it's a platform, right? But Majority of people here today says that AD Please is a community. I think that is the most amazing thing that any founder could ever think of, especially when you have a platform this big with hundreds and thousands of people, because then you know that you created a sense of belonging and, you know, they could leave your product, but, you know, you could launch maybe a whole new product and they will still be here because they're your community. And I think that is the most powerful thing that, you know, we have ever created. And that's why we continue to invest a lot back into our community because we understand that sometimes you might not be free to use the product and that's fine. But the community still has a tons of things where you can benefit from. So stay with us, right? And, and I think that that is, that is what we, we really try to create uh, when it comes to retention. Yeah, absolutely. I think the power of community is so, so important, right? Especially over the past couple of years, you know, as people working remote or managing a lot of lots of change from managing the pandemic to the great reshuffle now to a lot of tech layoffs and you know earlier asked about um you know the question around ai so i'm actually also really curious about how you think about you know generative ai and and how that might or might not impact mentorship in what ways um and how would you design the experience around that yeah for sure um Sorab has been asking amazing questions so shout out to Sorab. Uh, you know, Gen AI, I think it's a relatively new new thing, you know, this year. Um, obviously, things has gotten out of hand, you know, when it comes to scale of Gen AI, um, which is exciting. You know, I'm personally following the progress of it. I, I look at Gen AI, I think, as a huge, huge catalyst for great conversations and great relationships. These two things, right? It's a catalyst for great conversations and great relationships. 
but I don't see Jenny I replacing, you know, you talking to a human being because there are unique circumstances, unique stories that a human could never really fit into the system, right? And so that level of empathy to understand your question on a scenario, situational basis, those things cannot yet, you know, be performed by Gen AI. But the reason why I say it's a catalyst is because it helps smoothen the entire process, um, you know, to meaningful conversations and to meaningful relationships. I think one of the first thing that I that I really observed, um, you know, especially with so much Gen AI things coming out these days, is that a lot of teams, founders, startups, you know, whoever, right? They just jump into it, which is amazing. I think the spirit of innovation has to be there. We got to jump into it. We, you know, at ADP, we are talking about this and we are trying to explore things as well. But the, the most important thing is that when you jump into it, are you conscious of the value that you're delivering? Because I think a lot of people jump into it and while they were working on one product, it seems like, you know, they entirely sacrifice, you know, the other, you know, like, like the main product that they're working on and they just jump into Gen AI. So I don't think that to me is a healthy approach to think about problem solving. But I think the main problem solving that we should think about, you know, Oh, sorry. I think there's a there's a phone ring. Yes, I missed it. No worries. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I just no. Didn't know my phone. But yes, like, <laughs> the way that we think about like Gen AI, you know, just to keep this quick, is that you know we have to think that have you first delivered the problem that you're solving? Because when you jump into Gen AI, uh, Gen AI, I think you're jumping the hype, right? So does generative AI delivers your value? Or does it catalyze your value? I think those two are very big questions to ask. And if it's neither, then you're probably just jumping under the hype, right? So I think, you know, we, we think very carefully about that. And at AD Police, I think that the biggest, the biggest task that we have today is using Gen AI to match people, first of all, to obviously have AI to match people um, with relevant conversations. I think the second thing is how do we prompt them to ask the right questions, right? How do we prompt them to ask the right questions during the conversation, before the conversations, and even after the conversations, to maintain the relationship, to you know, like brush up their skills, so on and so forth. So these are things that we're thinking about. Yeah, I think it's important. The matching aspect is super great, like in making sure that the time is well spent. And I love the the prompting aspect, too, like making sure you prepare for the right, you know, set of question to show up. Um, so I think there's a lot of love for you know, the focus on the community, um, as well as uh, for, for your shout out. I know we're coming up on time. Uh, time just really flies. We usually ask the lightning round of questions to all of our uh, speakers and, and, you know, guests on the show. Are you ready for the challenge, Felix? Yeah, of course. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Uh, so in 60 seconds or less, uh, what is your favorite products currently and why? Oh my God! Wow. Um, probably maybe Chet beside G ADP. Yeah, yeah. Chat, chat GPT. Yeah, chat GPT. I, I, I will not. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll just say chat GPT. Okay. Who would you consider as your sort of the most influential product leader in your career, product or design leaders? Well, I think would be my former boss, um, Rohit. He's the CEO of GoTrade, and the reason why I say that is because it's 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 a, it's a huge topic to uncover. But I'm just gonna say this, right? Like. I think a lot of designers don't think about business and don't speak business and growth enough. Like we, we think about pixels, we think about experiences, but we don't think about numbers, growth and business enough. And, and that is a big problem. And we could obviously dive in the rabbit hole in this the other time. But, but my ex boss had, had, you know, had me looking at Excel sheets and growth numbers every single time I was in the office. In fact, every single day. And I think what that puts in perspective is, is your design working? You know, how can you make design better so that numbers grow as well without compromising the experience? And I think he, he really grew that into me and, 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 and I just so thank you for that. That's amazing. What is one final piece of advice or resources that you like to share with the community? Well, resources wise, you know, definitely use ADP list. There's a lot of amazing people there that you probably haven't met and connected with. So go, go to talk to them. Uh, one piece of advice I think is to, you know, be clear and not clever, you know, with your vision, with the things that, that you want, um, you know, don't try to, you know, be, 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 be clever about things, but be very clear. 
because I think you have no idea how many people are just not clear with things. And once you're clear and you're clear headed, sharp vision, you know where you're going. Um, you know, that is the, that is probably the best gift that you can have for yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much for creating um, such a wonderful platform as well. I think you're getting some shout outs and loves from the community. Uh, but um, thank you so much. We're coming up on time. And I know you're getting calls even at midnight. Uh, so you're definitely a very, very busy person. So thank you so much again for joining us and for folks. Um, uh, please uh, check out, you know, ADP list. Yes. Uh, org. And then, uh, you know, also subscribe to our newsletter where we will send out recaps of key takeaways from today's event, as well as future event updates. And then check out all the mentors, amazing mentors available, ADP list. Um, and yeah, thank you so much again, Felix, for, for joining us. It's really great to have you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, folks. Bye. Thanks, Ivy.